Hello and welcome to the She's Goals podcast. Uh, this is episode one. Really, really excited to be joined with Lily Woodham. Uh, currently plays for Reading, has made over 50 senior appearances, has also played for Wales, scored in her debut, 22 years old, already achieved so much. And we're joined uh, to talk about her journey into football and hopefully inspire a few of you guys watching. Um, because that's what we're trying to do here is really inspire the next generation. So yeah, welcome. Welcome Lee. Thank Thanks for joining you for having us. Me. Yeah, Thank really you. appreciate it. Um yeah, we just want to discover really how you made it into football, like because it's not an easy journey. Um mm -hmm. so many girls want to be where you are and like, you know, you're kind of I guess living the dream in their eyes. Um, but we know it's so much more than that. So I guess when did you first start playing football? Like what was your first touch with the ball, I guess? Uh I, I was I was probably around seven, I'd say, around that age. And um, my dad and my brother used to just take me out all the time. I used to go and watch my brother play. Um, and his friends and my dad used to just stick me in goal and <laughs> kind of just kick balls at me. And we had the best time. And I think that's where I kind of developed my love for it. And then, yeah, I used to play with the boys in school a mm -hmm. lot. Um, there weren't many girls teams that I knew of. Mm. So I think, yeah, just the enjo pure enjoyment of just being outside in the playground or like playing with the boys on a, on a Saturday. Um, mm. Yeah, that was probably the the start of start of where I went, yeah. Do you think like you were destined to be a player from like the moment you were kind of born? Do you think like you were God. born with some sort of <laughs> talent or God, like? I can tell you. Um, I'd like to say I, I yeah. think so, but like that's the journey I've kind of followed. Um, I didn't love school, so I wasn't mm. not very switched on up here, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've, I've loved the journey and yeah, I think maybe it might have been the path I was meant to take, but mm. yeah, it's been a good one. So you're playing with your brothers and your dad as well. Like, mm. I guess, did you, did they sort of see something in you from when you were younger? Like did they see, oh, you, you're really good at yeah. kicking the ball. Like you're a really strong yeah. tackler. Like uh, obviously you're a defender. So. I know, I know. Um, I think that was more, that came more from, they did obviously, said I was great and some of my friends used to say it too but my mum was always a big big supporter and a big believer that she thought um, that I could carry on playing football not that either of us mm. knew I would ever be a pro at it um, but yeah I think more from coaches and stuff that kind of came later on mm. um, where I needed to start kind of kind of focusing and stuff um, but yeah my family's always been a big big pusher of me carrying on and, and kind of never stopping I guess like back there back then like was the women's game very sort of different? Was it like, like was it in your head that you could do this professionally and get paid for it and and like get you know where it is now is so different. So did mm. you always think that was the case that you could go down that path? No, never. I think the only reason I kind of played was just I loved it. Like I just mm -hmm. love football. I love watching football. Um, and I think yeah, back then I well I didn't know there was a girls team until I was I think I was twelve. I joined Cardiff City Ladies. Um, yeah. The rule in Wales was that you couldn't play for a boys team after after yeah, that age. Crazy. So um, I found them and they really pushed me too. And that was kind of the start point where there was more girls playing. I thought, oh, there's, yeah. more, there's girls actually playing football. Like that's something I'd never really seen loads of. Um, and compared to now, everyone's on the telly, like the World mm. Cup's on, like everyone's watching it. Um, so yeah, I think the main one for me was when I went to Bristol and a lot of the girls were either part-time or kind of full time and, and did training and still had a job, but like mm. football paid. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, what? Like, <laughs> this is mad. So, yeah, I think then I thought, okay, it's something I can really push for. So I could be a player like that. And yeah, that was kind of where I realized probably around 14, maybe 15, 16, mm. that I was like, oh, okay, this is something that could, could happen. What was it like in school as well? Because you said mm. that, because I mean, obviously there's a lot being spoken about in schools where mm. girls aren't pushed to play football. Yeah. Was it the same for you? Was it like, did you speak to your teachers and say, mm -hmm. I want to be a footballer? And they were like, you know, what did they say? It what was my, like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm obviously very lucky and blessed to have the support system I did. Um, in in primary school, I I recently went back um, and they they had me and the boys team, they were pushing for me. Oh, wow, um, cool. Yeah, so they, they were always supportive. Um, I remember my teacher at the time was like, yeah, come play with the boys, like you can play in this team. And there was no really girls team me. then? So. No, not in not in primary school. And uh, luckily high school had a girls team, but the games and stuff were very mm. few and kind of, they weren't 
serious, I guess, in yeah, a way. No, yeah, yeah. Um, and I never really used to play, I guess. At that age, I was kind of a bit more worried about what people thought. And you go through that stage and you, I think, girls will know that you're like, oh, I don't want to put a football kit on. Like, that's, that's a bit yeah, weird. I kind of went through that stage where yeah. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my teachers, again, luckily pushed me and made me carry on doing it. So was it. there, like, actually a moment in your mind where you were doubting... Like being, being a footballer like yeah. for that period. Mm -hmm. I remember actually going on trial to Bristol um, mm. and the whole way over, I kind of cried. And uh, every time I tell it, it's the weirdest It's the weirdest story because like I cried because I thought I'm not going to be able to see my friends because mm. I have to train and play on the weekend. I'm not going to be able to go out. Uh, my family's going to be like, is, I'm going to have less time with the people I, I really care about. And I thought, mm. do I really want to do? And I said to my mum, I was like, I'd, I'd rather go out on the weekend. I'd rather <laughs> be wow. with my friends. And this was, I was probably... 13, 14, so yeah. like, I was probably going to the park with the girls or doing something. Um, she was like, no, you're going, and forced mm. me. Um, and I'm forever grateful to her for that because I wouldn't be where I am now without that. No so way. your mother, like your mom, mom really inspired you then, I guess. She, she yeah, she, she never let me give up. She drove me, if you've ever been to Wales, up the mountains, down yeah. the mountains. Games were on farms, like it was wow. crazy. So she drove me everywhere. My nan and my auntie as well, kind of, always took turns. My nan used to take me to the station, mm. um, to Bristol, drop me back um, until I could drive. So yeah, they were always making sure that I, I was doing what I needed to do. Who, who sort of inspired you then? Obviously, other than your mum and your mm -hmm. family. Like who else, did, when you were growing up, mm -hmm. do you look up to? Like It can be anyone, not football or anyone. Uh, I think, yeah, again, my mum, um, she's fought a lot of things and been through a lot herself and has always managed to keep me happy, keep mm -hmm. me doing what I'm doing and keep her doing what she's doing. So she's a big one where it's always working hard and, and pushing through stuff. But growing up, Messi was another one. Oh, wow. No, I'm nice. a big Messi fan, not Ronaldo. Yeah, so oh, yeah, really I like know that. I'm Messi. <laughs> but as I grew up and I actually joined Reading, um, Farrah, Farrah Williams was another one. Yeah. Um, she always used to do extras and had done so much in the game already, mm -hmm. but would always be one of the last players out. Um, mm -hmm. she's so funny and she was like someone that brought me in. Um, there was a few girls there at the time. My, my friend, Charlie, Grace, Brooke, um, senior players that kind of looked out for me and mm -hmm. kept me on, on the right track. Yeah. I guess what, what would you say is like the biggest change as well mm -hmm. between women's football? Like, so you were 10 years ago, you were 12, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, mad, isn't it? I know. And now 22 Baby. and playing professionally. <laughs> so like, what's like the difference between when you, you were that age to like now, like uh, the, women's, the women's game, you think? It's mad. It's completely different, isn't it? Like, I think obviously England winning the Euros was massive. I think that gave her the, another boost that it needed. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, even before then, the fact that we're on Sky, mm. um, now the World Cup, like everyone's watching it. Um, mm. I think my physio was saying the other day, they're pushing an AFL game back in Australia for the Matildas to be on the yeah. big screen for loads of people to watch. Like that would have never happened no. years ago. You, you'd have never even heard people talking about it. I guess you could never necessarily watch women's football when you no. were growing up. No, well. there was none. There was none. Um, unless they were big games like FA Cup or or something mm. massive was going on. Um, yeah, you'd have you'd have had no at twelve. I'd have had no idea. Is that tricky? Like to not have the women to look up to. Uh, I didn't even draw. I didn't even think about it at the time because I you never know. thought it would. I would be in that position, so I never really yeah. thought, "Oh, I want to be that women's footballer." Because mm. there was there wasn't many that I kind of knew of or or looked at or watched. So yeah, it was something I never really thought about, to be honest. I guess yeah. I guess that's kind of like an issue in a way because like girls don't realise it's actually an opportunity for there's actually an opportunity for them to like become you know leah williamson or become yeah. yourself oh, like I, know, yeah. I i guess it must feel amazing now to actually like you've got you know twenty thousand followers a lot of mm -hmm. them i guess young girls to be able mm -hmm. to actually be a role model for them yeah and i think like, yeah it's it's really important i think yeah obviously you mentioned um leah williamson and stuff she's mm. um, an amazing player um and i think a lot of the girls um that are that level and that high profile mm -hmm. are doing a ama an amazing job of still putting back into the game yeah um there's not many women's footballers you see that don't yeah uh, do that i think a lot of players like that will always put back will always have time for fans that want to see them and stuff um mm. so yeah i think that's really important i guess like what's the also what's the 
I'm sort of jumping between questions. Here. What's the <laughs> like biggest thing you want for the women's game going forwards? Like, because I, I see so many people talk about like some of the comments I get on my Instagram are like, oh, they just want equal pay and stuff. But I don't think it's about that. No. It's about opportunity. But yeah. I want to hear from you. Like, what do you want to see like in the women's game? I think just the, the growth needs to just carry on going. I think you can see now Wembley gets sold out every time England play. Yeah. Which you'd never see before. So I and I completely get the the fans coming into the stadiums and that whole thing of getting bums on seats and that kind of stuff. But the way it's going, that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like That is going to yeah. be what ends up happening. Um, as long as people still invest and still put the time in and the money into the women's game, mm -hmm. it's only going to go up. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think... Yeah, the, it's the comments, inevitable, inevitable, yeah, really. it's, it's going to happen. It should happen, it's rightly so, yeah. I guess we can go a bit more into your your professional career now. Like, you had a really, you got burst into the scene, as Micah Richards would say. <laughs> uh, burst into the scene and scored in your debut for Wales. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that like? Like, even just walk, like playing for Wales at that young yeah. age, what was that like? It's the best feeling ever, I think. Anyone who knows any Welsh players is... It's mm. the biggest, massive for us. Like we just love, we just love Wales. Like yeah. that's all we talk about. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think every time I put the shirt on, it's the best feeling. And I think it's an honour for everyone to get picked to even go away with your national team. I think that's probably the same for mm. every international player. Um, but yeah, scoring on my debut was, I'd say up there with my top career moment for sure. Um, was it like scoring like just in front of people and? Do you know what? It was in COVID, so there, there was no oh. one even there to celebrate. Oh, I know, I that, not that I'm a great yeah. celebrator anyway. I probably would have just turned around and, and jumped yeah. or something, but no, no one was there. But yeah, luckily I was surrounded by players on the pitch like Sophie Ingle, uh, Jess Fishlock, Has James, mm. like that I'd always looked up to um, as a young Welsh player. You do, and they were celebrating with me, and I was like, oh. You don't, I feel crazy. like you don't even think about the celebration when you score. Oh, no. The adrenaline is like so crazy that you're like, because I see like players now doing all these crazy celebrations. And I yeah. remember when I scored, I was like grassroots level. I'd never thought about what celebration. No, I was I've never, do. you know what? I never really <laughs> scored too many goals. So, no, yes, yeah, yeah, I never really have a celebration ready. But yeah, it must be incredible. What's it, it like good. as well seeing your name on the back of a Wales shirt as well? Like, oh, that mad. Must have been crazy. I think, yeah, it's mad because obviously we've come so far as a nation now. The girls never used to have names on their top like oh, really? there wasn't a thing um it used to be men's kit passed down w way before wow. me um but yeah they fought a lot they old a lot and i've got us a lot of things and even names on shirts like the first time that happened that was like that's oh that's mad yeah so they fought for a lot and, and still are to be fair but yeah our um what's your, our association um mm. are really for us and really with us at, um now so yeah they've they've fought for a lot which is nice. So before, so before they had to wear like the men's kit and stuff. Yeah, to... baggy. You see some of the photos, the sleeves and stuff are down here. Like, wow. it, it's mad. So yeah, that wasn't even that. I say not that long ago. I'd say, what, ten, eight, ten, ten years, ten years ago. ago, maybe, maybe less, less Jeez. time that they were wearing that. Um, so I remember I wasn't on the camp when they had their names on the shirts, but that was a big, big step for us. I guess yeah, to, and tell us about playing. I guess professionally in in the women's super league. Mm. You made your debut, I think, was eighteen mm -hmm. or really young. Mm -hmm. Like, you just sort of almost come out of like college, I guess. I didn't, you didn't go. To, did you go yeah. to college? Or? I did. Yeah, yeah. You did go to college. Well, yeah. I can say I went a couple <laughs> of days, but I still managed <laughs> to get something from it. Yeah, I went. I started off at Bristol, so I went there to college, and then I went to JMA at Reading. Yeah. Um, not that I ever attended. Do you but not? No. I'm not. I'm not a school fan. I'll be honest, but yeah. I did try my best. Got a B Tech. Um, but yeah, I got my debut. I'm I'm pretty sure it was Phil Bristol against Reading. Um, I was quite young at the time, um, and the manager put me on, and then yeah, I made a day de my debut for Reading against Yeovil. Mm. I think I came on for Farah, so that yeah, again, massive. Wow. Yeah, great time. <laughs> That's um, some big boots to fill. I massive, aren't they? Yeah. So luckily, I've been given a lot of opportunity, and I'm grateful for people that have done that. What's it like playing alongside all of these? Like you said, senior, they're like oh, your friends now, but like senior yeah, players mad. you probably looked up to, like, you know, like Farrah, like, yeah, know. still look up to her. It's yeah, crazy. What's it like just like walking into the changing room and just like seeing all these people? I think it's like, just, yeah, I've been lucky to obviously play against them with amazing players. Like, you play against the top four and this, mm. like, some of the best footballers ever. So, like, that's a that's really big. Um, obviously, we got relegated, which is 
isn't great for us. But yeah, the years I was in in the WSL, yeah, that was that was mad. It was really cool. We'll track back a bit to like your earlier mm. days, and you were speaking about how in the professional game, like your you made your debut so young, you scored for Wales at the age of twenty. Like not many girls get to do that. Mm. Like, and I guess that's what I asked this question earlier. But like, what like did separate you growing through the academy? Like, what did coaches say that was different about you? Oh. So yeah. other players, was there anything, like, what? is there, like, was it your determination, mm -hmm. your hard work, was it, like, a, a certain skill set mm. you have, like, is it your amazing passing, it could be anything, like, is there oh, anything you, you think I don't know, I, d I don't think I, I'm not sure what it was, I don't know, I guess, just sticking at it and stuff, working hard, um, I, think it's ha I think it's helped, I'm left-footed, mm. so there's not many left-footed players um, yeah. in the game, so that it's think, carried me a long way that has but i think you're giving yeah. enough, yourself enough credit because i think it is really hard work like you know yeah. going through at age of 13 14 being at school but having to focus fully on football as mm. well like like how much hard work does go into it is i guess it's a uh, lot. i think yeah it's the best job in the world isn't it like yeah it's amazing you get to play football every day is nothing better really but i think obviously behind the scenes a lot of it is you miss out on a lot of stuff um, mm. which I know a lot of a lot of girls will have gone through. Um, I think injuries is another thing that people don't realise take a massive toll on you. Um, yeah. Not being able to do something you love for periods like ACLs, for example. Yeah, yeah, it's nine no, months out true. and you have to watch all the girls go out and play. And I think that's another big thing that people forget about. And just making sure that you, it's constantly football. So even on off days, even on weekends, it's not, oh, I've got a day off, I can do this, this, this. You kind mm. of got to look after yourself 24-7. What are like your, I guess, uh, go, going on to the injuries actually is a good point. Mm. So many ACL injuries know, at the moment. it's ridiculous, like, it's mad. Like, why is that? Is there a reason for it, do you think? God, I mean, you obviously you're me. not, uh, you don't study yeah. it, but what do you think? I think there like, needs to be a lot more done in terms of finding out what pe people can do and, and why within the women's game there's so many ACLs. There's, yeah. there's got to be something that can kind of bring that down. Um, but yeah, every time someone does an ACL, I think it's it's not a surprise anymore for players within yeah, the women's weird. game, which is yeah. which is rubbish, really. I think it's probably one of the worst injuries mm. to do. So, yeah, I think, yeah, there's got to be some more research done into it. And Is there, like, enough access to, like, really good physios and, like, yeah. facilities, would you say? Mm -hmm. Has that changed over the last, sort of, like, five years as well, would you say? Or Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me personally, I think going from playing on pitches where I've got glass bottles on or <laughs> yeah. you need to mow the lawn before you actually play wow. to stadiums and the training ground I'm at is completely different. I think for a lot of clubs, it is still a struggle. I think mm. it is still hard. There's a part-time physio, there's there's wow. part-time and stuff, but there's always, clubs are always helpful. Clubs always want to have your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yeah, as the game grows, I think that'll constantly be getting better. Yeah, for sure. And that must have been hard as well, like leaving Wales, even yeah. now, like be living in England, like yeah. it, do you go back and see your family quite a lot or like? I try to, work, I yeah. try, it's only two hours down the motorway, so luckily That's for me, I'm, yeah. I'm not too bad, but yeah, I try to as much as I can without kind of making myself too tired for training the next day or whatever. But yeah, when I get time off, fly down the M4, <laughs> straight back. <laughs> and like, what's your, um, on that topic, like what's your, I guess, training schedule like like you, I know you're super busy like mm -hmm. are you training like is it every day is it like all mm -hmm. day like, what's your training schedule like at the moment so ours is yeah ours is different to what it was last year so we're every mm, we're Tuesday Wednesday Thursday off on a Friday and a Monday mm -hmm. and we're in probably nine till it depends what time it depends what you do really in your day it depends yeah, if you want to yeah. stay you can stay for longer um but yeah we um we're in probably nine, half eight, do gym. And then if you want treatment from the physio, if you want to go through clips or mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, then you can stay longer, but. Do you have like strict dietary restrictions as well? Or is sure, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's on, I think that's that's the responsibility of the players. I think clubs yeah. do help. Yeah. There's always a like a leaflet that comes out and mm -hmm. it's kind of what days you need to be eating what and what you should be eating on d at different times and stuff. Um, whether you stick to that or don't is, I guess, completely up to you, kind of. That's, that's how you take it, right? But um, mm. yeah, there is always that element of making sure you're not eating 
rubbish all the time, I guess. How do you like keep yourself like motivated each day as well? Is it because you just love playing still? Or is yeah, it... I just love playing. Like yeah. it's just football, and you wake up. I can't complain. There's literally <laughs> no reason for me to ever moan about. It's everyone's dream. Like you wake up, go outside. Mm. My best friends just signed for Reading. Mm. So going to work with your best friend to play for it's mad. When you say it out loud, like it's crazy. Is it is it like that? Like is that actually how it feels? Though, like obviously, you know, you can't complain. Is there like is it harder? It must. There must be. It must be harder than it looks. Or is it literally just like you're living your dream? You wake up. You it's tough. Football, like, it, I tell it you, when you tough. when you finish gym and and you're tired and the dom starts setting in, it's it's, just, it's a tough day. But yeah, I mean, I just love football, so it's like, mm. this is what it is. Yeah. And then just going going on to like, so obviously we set this page up like two mm -hmm. months ago. It's got like two two and a half million people who are kind of like reached on it so far, but there's been a, like a split between like a lot of negativity. Mm -hmm. A lot of positivity, a lot of support, like mm -hmm. so much support, but also so much yeah. like horrible, like nasty comments that, yeah. that are unreasonable and don't make any sense. Like, it's mad. Yeah. do you get that on your social media? Or do you ever get tweeted or commented on like horrible things? Uh, or, like, I have seen it again. Luckily for me, everyone at home when I was growing up always so support. Like my friends from home mm. have always supported me and and been a mate. Like I couldn't. They're like my support system, all the yeah. girls at home, all my family and stuff, the girls up here. Uh, luckily, I've never had many negative comments. Um, yeah. I've had the odd few that I never really bothered to look at. But yeah, I've seen some girls get some crazy ones, get back to the kitchen. That as your standard, yeah. your standard tweet, really. It's mad. How do you respond to like a tweet? So I've, so I've had comments that say like women's football is boring. Yeah. Um, yeah, go out to the kitchen is a standard one. I said, like, everyone loves that one. How, how do you one. like deal with like if you see that like because mm -hmm. I, I I can imagine if it was me me like mm. that, I would get those comments and I and I have it kind of is me because I'm running the yeah, account. Yeah, of course. So um, for me, it's even me. It's hard to think like that girl must see that and think that's that's horrible to take. Yeah. Like, do you just have to block it out or like is mm -hmm. it a struggle? Like it must be. Yeah. Look, it's affects everyone different i think a lot of people i would love to answer some comments and just give it back but <laughs> yeah you can't it's it's not it's not a great thing to do it's, yeah, no, cool. i mean you can and some people some people do and it's very funny it comes out and it's the funniest thing ever but i think yeah it's it's you you're entitled to your opinion like i'm not i'm not saying that you're gonna force you to watch it you don't have to watch it you don't yeah. watch it um but yeah, there's always people on there with whatever you do, whatever job you do, whatever life decision you make, mm. there's always going to be someone's got to say something. I guess, what would your message be? This is actually something, a comment I got on the page mm -hmm. to ask you. So nice. <laughs> she's a girl, she wants to be, you know, she wants to be like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would your message be to her, like, growing growing up? Like, what would you say to her to, to make it? What would be your biggest advice? Uh... Biggest advice. I think for me, I'd just say don't let anyone stop you. I know I hmm. used to struggle with that in terms of caring about what people thought or what people would think of my, about me playing football. And looking hmm. back, I honestly could not care any less anymore. Yeah. So I think just not letting people like, I guess, tell you can't do it. Hmm. I think even now for girls is so much easier. Not, hmm. e okay, I say easier, but there's um more people on telly. There's more role models. There's... Mm -hmm big names within the women's game now that do so much um, that you can be, that you can look up to be. Yeah. I think, yeah, just don't let anyone tell you to quit. Did anyone it's... ever tell you to quit? No, again, luckily, no one, honestly, no. my journey and the support system I have, I've been blessed. No one ever at home did. Um, In always school, been, was it like? No, always been supported, supported, I think. Wow, that's good. Yeah, everyone's always been, even through high school and stuff, the girls always say, go on, Lil, like, why are you not playing? Like, do you why think are you not? that helped you? Like, yeah, like, massively. Because not every girl has that. So no, I guess and I think that's be... a big, I think that would be a big issue. I, I know people, the young girls have told me before that the boys are like, oh, you can't play like you're a girl. Mm. And that's still a thing. But uh, yeah, luckily for me, I never had that. But if I did, I know how hard that would have been. Mm. But just don't let people change what you want to do. It's your life. You do what you want to do with it. And yeah. I guess also like there's a lot of I guess sacrifice involved mm. with it as well. Like you've sort of sacrificed like mm -hmm. your family, like family, being mm. spend time with them. Like, is that something you didn't like just say like go for it? Like they're worried about. Like, yeah. Like you were worried about leaving home, mm -hmm. you're crying on the way to the trial. Yeah. There'll be another young girl. They're probably doing the same. Yeah. What would you? I guess. Um, I think it would be look if 
you want to be a professional footballer is not the easiest route, and there's, there's always mm. whatever you want to be, I guess, professionally. There's always sacrifices you have to make, um, but just constantly working hard if it's really something you want to do, and you have to use every second you kind of have or whatever to kind of reach your dream and reach your goal. Um, mm -hmm. So you're just sticking at it is what I'd always say. And I guess what changes could be made uh, for young girls getting into football now? Like, so mm -hmm. I know schools, I don't let girls play P, uh, play football on PE sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, is there, does there need to be a big shift there in, in how girls can be supported? Yeah, it's mad. I went to a school not long ago and there's kind of days where the boys and girls mix to play. There's days mm -hmm. that just girls play football. There's days that just boys play football. I think that was, I think that's a big thing because I know a lot of girls will struggle to deal with comments made by other people. So having a girls only, for example, football day or football lunchtime, I think mm -hmm. is a big help because you're kind of surrounded by people that you can feel comfortable with. Um, so I think that's another big thing, just making sure they have the opportunity as much as the boys do. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what's next? What's next for you as well? This is oh, like God. a big jump to a, what's big next? Question. What's next for you? Uh, I think I was just focusing on this season. Obviously, we we need to try and get back up. We need to try and get promoted um, as a group. And I think, yeah, fingers crossed. If we all focus and, and do our best this season, we do. And mm -hmm. obviously, that and my my international career is something this season I'll focus on a lot. Well, we're talking about that actually. Like mm -hmm. now with Reading it's a big shift of mm -hmm. like you need that winning men winning mentality mm -hmm, like for sure have the coaches like really installed that in you like as a manager really like yeah you know tell you we've got you know every game we've got to go out and win mm -hmm. is that as a real shift in the in the uh, attitude, I guess yeah I mean last season we lost a lot of players and the coaches the coaches aren't there anymore that were um they were the coaches I had for since I'd been there so okay cool I think, yeah, it's a, it's a completely different season. Um, the last kind of five, six years at Reading, mm. Mm, I say five, six, four, it's probably been a bit tough. We've always kind of had mixed results and a mixed season. Um, so, yeah, it's a different challenge, I guess, going into every game, mm. needing to win um, rather than going into every game, just trying to fight for points and trying to fight to stay up. It's just a different challenge. Yeah. It must have been yeah tough, I guess, playing mm -hmm. against likes of like Arsenal and oh, Man United. A like, tough time, yeah, yeah. What well, I mean, it must be it must be crazy even sharing a pitch with players like that too. Oh, like, it's mad. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's incredible. I think obviously the players you get to meet along the way are are, are amazing and yeah. Who's the the toughest player you played against as well on that topic? Because you play you play left back, don't you? Yeah. So when you got oh, some. <laughs> I can imagine. I play right back, so I know it's what it is like. It's a tough time. <laughs> Chloe Kelly, I think, has given me the hardest, the yeah. hardest day at the office. Um, she's just really good at one like, v mm. one coming at you and go left, right. Is, is a tough time out there. Yeah, how do you yeah. defend against a player like that? Like, <sighs> oh, just do your best. <laughs> uh, no, there's um, yeah. there's obviously. I think a lot of players will look at clips and look at what yeah. players tend to do or what they try and do. Um, but yeah, it's just constantly working on how you can be better. How do you win that 1v1? How What do you need to do? Kind I, actually, of thing. I actually saw a clip of, um, I think it's Carl Walker, he's mm -hmm. a fullback, um, and he was speaking about how he, he analyzes the players' mm -hmm. movements and yeah. the way they receive the ball. Like, do you do a lot of that? Like, you have to analyze the winger of that yeah. team before you play. So you do. So there's like a lot of clips that you can kind of have access to, whether they kind of look to push and go on the outside or whether they're a left foot or playing on the right, mm -hmm. they probably get intended cut in. So instead of jumping, you just have lots of different things that you look out for and mm -hmm. do they run in behind, do they come feet? So mm -hmm. yeah, there's loads of things, yeah. And have you always been left back or have you played like well, other positions? Well, started off as a winger and I've been brought back Push slowly. Back. Yeah, you just come back here, yeah. <laughs> so are you like, you're definitely more of an attacking, I guess, attacking Yeah, fullback. I would say yeah. I'm not the one to put in the massive crunching slide tackle, mm. but I can if I need to. Um, yeah, I like to get forward as much as I can. Yeah. And um, who's like the, the best player you've played with as well? Best player I've played with? Oh my goodness. Farah. It's got to be Farah, isn't it? Farrah. She, yeah, she's... Yeah. The way she used to see passes that I'd not even clocked or seen, I'd be like, well, where have you seen that? Yeah, mad. And she Football like, brain is crazy. I guess you, t you learned a lot from her as well and like... Mm -hmm. a lot yeah, I think I've learned a lot from players I've been with, whether that's on the pitch, uh, how you kind of act off the pitch, how mm. you recover, how you... I've learned different things from so many different players. Mm -hmm. 
like how to be professional, do an interview. Like there's just so many different parts to it that I've yeah. taken from everyone. Uh, luckily for me, I've been around some amazing people, yeah. What's like the biggest piece of advice you've received from a, from a coach or uh, I guess it's not a big question. What's the biggest sort of yeah. advice you've got? What advice? I've been given a lot to be fair to myself. Um, I'd say the biggest one is not getting frustrated. I tend to get mm. very hard on myself in terms of getting annoyed at a mistake or something. Um, so yeah, that's been a lot of the advice I've been. No, that's, that's, that's a big given. one. Yeah. Making a mistake and getting the game and, being worried that you're going to do the same yeah. one. How do you deal with that? Like, I've done a lot of work on it in terms of how I kind of switch myself back to um, back to just focusing on the game. Is kind of there's loads of different techniques for it. I didn't even mm. realize, but yeah, it it works for me as long as I'm kind of okay. Focus. That's happened. Let it go. Go again. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a uh, neuroscience. I'm going to say neuroscience, sports psychologist. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Um, so she's come on Wales camps a lot and has really helped with kind of breathing exercises. Didn't know they existed. Wow, that's, yeah. I didn't What's know that the other one? one? Visualization, mental. So yeah. yeah, that's, I didn't know that was even a th There's a so much thing. more to it than you think, isn't oh, there? Oh, it's mad. It, yeah, but Mentality. she was talking us through it and there's so much that you can do to help you physically is crazy. But yeah, I've been working on that. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> that's actually, uh, yeah, that's an interesting point. Is it, do you get like more nervous before playing against like the likes of Chloe Kelly and stuff? Like, mm -hmm. do you go, do you, or is it the same, do you have to have the same mentality? Like I'm going into this game, like I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna one v one. I'm gonna beat them every time. Yeah. But like, do you like, is it like nerve wracking come up? Like you're playing against Man City, you're playing against Chloe Kelly, it must that's be that's like, time. Yeah, I think you kind of have to try and have the same mentality. Mm -hmm. Whether you do or not is different, different yeah. story. I think just the name, isn't it? Like you're playing Man City, you're playing Arsenal, you're playing like they're top, top teams, Chelsea um, and United, you're playing top teams with unbelievable players. You get always more nervous um, as an underdog, I guess, because mm -hmm. you've got to work a lot harder um, yeah. than you would have to, I guess, against a team that's closer to you within the league. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is nerve wracking. Um, especially God, when they were on Sky, I was, I was hard because you, you've got everyone watching you and yeah, that must be, you've got to really being on TV. put on a good performance. And I think, yeah, obviously when you play the top four, it's, it's, it is tough. Is there like a lot more pressure on you when you like, you know, you're on TV, do you see yourself on the, uh, on the screen and stuff? I don't know if it's pressure or just more nerves because yeah, yeah it's just, it's just different, isn't it? On telly, I guess. Yeah. It must be, it must be bizarre being on TV after growing up, never seeing. Oh, it's so weird, yeah, it's, 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 it's mad. It's cool, I'm not, yeah. It's mad because people will probably watch this and be like, who on earth is she? Like, <laughs> I'm not up there yet, but hopefully I will be one day. definitely are, yeah. you're doing, doing good for your age, yeah, it's I crazy. When you, yeah, when you do go on telly, I'm like, oh my God, there I am. Yeah. What? Mad. It's mad, it's crazy. I guess, yeah, one last, I guess, one last sort of big question. We kind of touched on it a bit where you gave advice to mm -hmm. to young girls, but like, yeah, and we kind of mentioned it a bit, but like, yeah, where where do you want to see like women's football go now? Like, where do you, you know, you said it's inevitable, right? It's going to become, yeah. going to become massive. Oh, like, it has to, yeah. Like, what's your, what do you want to see in like five years time? Where do you want to see the game at? Do you want to see it on TV everywhere? Do you want to see stadium? Like, what do you want to see? It'd be nice, I think, to have the fuller stadiums and people coming out to support it rather mm -hmm. than watching on telly. I think as a player playing in front of lots of fans is, is a big boost. I think we went away with Wales and played against America and I've never experienced anything like it, like a full stadium. Mm -hmm. um, the adrenaline you get from it, from fans, even yeah. against you. like. Can you hear it's the mad. fans like shouting stuff? Like, can you hear? No, it all voices? ends up turning into one noise. It's weird. Yeah. Every, yeah, you try and shout someone on the pitch though, and it was, yeah. it was really loud. Like it's harder. Um, but yeah, it all kind of unless you go close, I guess you never really. You were like anything. just. It's, it must be like off-putting if you like you see a fan and you're, like you. It's, is it harder like focus on what's going on the pitch when you got all that going around you? Or do you just like block it out? Yeah, you like... you end up just blocking it out. It's a really weird feeling. I think after the game, it's really nice going to see fans and spending time with people that have come out to support you. But yeah, when you're in it, it's blocked. What's your like, best, I guess, fan moment as well? Has there been like, a moment oh where you're like, God. I really inspired that girl or like? Uh, fan moment. I've Yeah, I've had one. 
Yeah, so one of the two girls came to watch a game and had um, about having my shirt, and I'd never had that before. It wow, that's your yeah, shirt. Yeah, crazy. So cool. Oh my God, yes, you can. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they ended up being, they were lovely, and I got in contact with, their mum got in contact with me and said um, it was one of their birthdays, so I sent a video oh. and ended up going to their house and giving them a shirt. Mm. And it, their little face, it was so, it was just proper heartwarming because their faces yeah. were lit up, and I was like, oh, it's so cute. Yeah, that is cute. And that's yeah. the first time I'd ever been to a house where they were like surprised or like that kind of thing for a shirt. Mm. Um, and it was just really cute. Yeah, they were lovely. Have you seen, have you seen like, um, would you say an increase in like fans? In, oh in yeah, games, definitely. Like it's that? massive now, isn't it? Like mm. it's huge. Like the Australia Island game, for example, World Cup up yeah. 80,000. Yeah. Like it's, it's just mad to see how many people are, are back so in it now. stuff you're working on outside of football as well. You said about going to schools and stuff. Oh yeah, so yeah. I do that a lot. I, um, it's called Sporting Sports for Champions and they've been incredible. So uh, yeah, I kind of just go in and um, to schools and stuff and do like a little presentation on football. Um, and then we do like fitness circuits and stuff. Um, it's, it's an amazing like company to, to kind of work for. Um, just cause it kind of works in terms of, I'd, I've always wanted to go into schools and kind of help younger girls. I've always, that's something I've always looked to do, but obviously getting into contact with schools locally or schools I don't have contact with, mm -hmm. um, it's tough. So yeah, working with them has been amazing that I can do that, which is, it's really cool. Um, I think, yeah, that's that's another big thing for me. Is that like support. your, would you say that's like one of your proudest moments, I guess, like being able, like being able to mm -hmm. now at level you're at, you're mm. at like the top level, is that like something you like love doing is like giving back and... Yeah, I think a lot of people will say the same. It's, it's an amazing feeling to just see girls want to play football. I mm. think that's just what we all want is just for the game to keep going. And the only way to do that is to get more, more girls into it. So. Would you say that's the, that's the end goal is to get more girls playing football? Yeah, that definitely. I think it? getting into football and sticking at it you know what I mean? Not giving it up at a certain age or mm. or stopping it because of certain reasons. Because yeah. I think people people don't understand. I think people don't get that that no woman's footballer, no woman's idol in any wherever they are are trying to get um, paid more or like get paid hundreds of thousands a week. No, it's not about that. And I think a lot of comments are saying, "Oh, why are they trying to be paid as much as men?" They're not. <sighs> the, uh, I think that's the biggest misconception with the women's game is that all you're trying to do mm -hmm. is help little girls like be able to play football if they want to play football. Yeah. Just like a boy can grow up and play yeah. football in the school if he wants to. So like, yeah. am I right in saying that's like yeah. that's what I you mean, want? Yeah, like, no one's no one's asking for the world. I think yeah. every women's footballer is understanding that we do deserve equal opportunities. We do deserve a lot of equal things. Um a lot of the things aren't even money related that we no, yeah. should be getting uh, mm. standard as as a women's professional sport or team. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, the main thing for a lot of us is just giving back and trying to get it. Everyone trying to push it, mm. so not just people investing or people on the outside like within the game. Still, I mean pushing the it. the attendances now are like <laughs> through the roof yeah. and like so it should be treated like. It should be treated as big as any other league is. Yeah. Like, that's the thing because we've seen the World Cup. Like, yeah. I think the average attendance of the first like ten games was like over thirty thousand per yeah. game. Which years which, ago you wouldn't have you wouldn't have had. But yeah. you you get like m men's games that don't even get that in the championship in the league yeah. in League One, League mm -hmm. Two. They don't get anywhere close to that. Um, but yeah, like you said, it was just it's just about getting girls to play mm -hmm. to be able to play football yeah, yeah it'll get there for sure as long as everyone keeps pushing it i think yeah awesome cool thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate it also our first episode so i'm a bit like um, all over the place but i appreciate you answering no problem. answering my questions Great and time. um yeah like like we said this whole podcast i've set up is to just inspire the next generation of yeah. girls there isn't necessarily that that many podcasts out there doing it but mm -hmm. there needs to be because you've got an incredible story like you know leaving leaving Wales coming to England playing football mm -hmm. struggling when you're 13 14 like those yeah. are the stories that like mm. need to be heard yeah for sure so I really appreciate you, you coming on no problem thank you for having me it was good thank you sure.